I always thought that, you know, when it came to vacations, spring break, Christmas, if I had the chance to go home, I was lucky. But what I realized working in this position is that a lot of these international students never get to go home, but maybe once a year, or maybe once in their four years that they're here. You know, first and foremost, you know, coming to this new culture, coming to America, where these people are like, I'm not exaggerating, totally opposite to their career, especially in Tulsa, because I've been in other places, but especially Tulsa, especially ORU. Um, think of everything ORU, and just think of the opposite, and that's Trinidad. Canada, you can see what you want. It's the second largest country in the world, farm has. And it's not winter all year round, as everyone thinks. There's summer, and there's fall, and there's spring. <laughs> we don't have polar bears as pets, and we don't live in igloos. I had questions like, so you have cars? So you ride on, um, so you don't ride on camels? You don't swing from tree to tree like Shaka Zulu? Since I've been here, I have decided that I'm going to educate as much people as I can about Africa. America also has its good places, its good cities and all of that. We have the same thing too. My name is Nami and I am a Liberian citizen. Um, my country has just ended 14 years of civil war recently. And um, you know, when the civil war broke out, my family and I came over to the US. So I represent all those internationals who, for whatever reason, had to leave their country and they came over to America and ended up growing up in this culture, but yet still retained their identity from the nation that they represent. One thing that was really, really, has been really, really hard coming from Norway to the U.S. has been everything that's different with finances and trying to find all the different paperwork you need to do to get your social security number and to get work. Just uh, even, just uh, figuring out how to buy things, how to get insurance, how to get a cell phone, stuff like that is usually harder. Um, I just want to say that Africans, Whoever, Asians, we're all the same. We're just people, but, um, we just have different cultures, but we're really the same. And it's so funny, I remember coming to the States and people were asking me, so do you live in a hut? Or uh, how does it feel to wear clothes for the first time? And <laughs> I mean, just so much crazy stuff. I encourage all you Americans to not just think, oh, okay, well, they're international, they must not know anything, but to take time to talk to somebody from a different country and find out who they are, where they're from, because bottom line is people, no matter where individuals are from, we're all made of the same basic stuff. You know, we just come in different shapes, sizes, colors, accents, but basically, at the end of the day, we're all a bunch of dust walking around. Listen, we've got something very special for worship this morning. We've got all of our international students that are musically inclined that have joined together to present to you worship from a whole bunch of different cultures. And listen, you know the Bible says that every nation will come and bow their knee before the Lord and acknowledge him as Jesus Christ. So listen, today 
We're all from all kinds of different places, but you know what? We're all one body of Christ, and we're unified in that and in our worship to the Lord. So I invite you to participate this morning in this awesome presentation of worship.
种味道，天地都看见，我身。Lift a new song to him this morning. Lift your native tongue. Lift your spiritual language. Worship him from your depths. Worship him from your soul. He is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. Father, you are the God of nations. You display your power among the peoples. Father, we ask you to be present here in our midst. We thank you that you are here now. Father, that you are Lord over every tongue, over every tribe, that you are calling them even now from the corners of the earth to come unto salvation. Father, we thank you that you have called us out of darkness, that you have set our feet on a solid rock, God, that you have brought us all here to this place, to this time, to this season, Father, that you have called us to walk as one unified body from every nation, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would convict us, Father, if we have despised our brother, if we have looked down on those that are different from us, God, that you would heal our hearts, that you would heal our attitudes, Father, that you would cause us to love one another with an everlasting love, knowing that this, this is a picture of heaven, this is a picture of how we will be for all of eternity, worshiping you in one accord, worshiping you in one voice, one heavenly language. God, we exalt you. We exalt you this morning. You are Lord of lords. You are God of God. We love you. Yea, 
Jesus, vi elsker dig med hele mitt hjerte. Med hele mitt hjerte. Vi elsker dig i morgen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome again. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tara Hannon, and <laughs> I am the coordinator of the international students here on this campus, and I love them all dearly, and I encourage you to do the same, to step out of your comfort zones and get to know them. They are precious people, and they are miracles that have been brought to us to teach us things, so there's a lot that we can learn from them. Um, once again, I just want to welcome you to the first ever International Chapel. Woo -woo! We have a lot of unique things in our schedule this morning, but first I want to mention that the International Student Organization has put together an amazing cookbook of recipes from all around the world, and that will be sold after the service out in the lobby, so be sure to get a copy. It's only $10. You can give it away as a gift. It's a great, great thing. Um, I have personally tasted a lot of those recipes, so I can attest. They are delicious. We also want to um, just give a special welcome to the Ministers Alliance, who is here with us this morning, the pastors and ministers. If they could stand, we just want to honor you wherever you are. Woo! Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, also, I want to give an announcement um, about our amazing athletes. A lot of them are international students. I don't know if you know that, but woo woo! Um, the men's basketball NCAA selection show watch party will be Sunday afternoon on the Maybe Center floor, and doors will open at 4.30. The selection show will air at 5 p.m. And the women's basketball selection show watch party will be Monday evening on the Maybe Center floor, and doors will open at 5.30. The selection show will air at 6 p.m., so please enter through the north lobby. And ORU NCAA gear will be for sale, so fans can get travel and ticket information for the tournament games as well. And players and coaches will be in attendance to visit with the fans and to sign autographs. So let's support our athletes. They do an amazing job, and they give this school such notoriety. So. One of the um, first things on our schedule this morning is someone who is very dear to the ORU community. Um, all of the students that we have have amazing testimonies. They have amazing stories of the places they have been and the lives they have led. So to share these stories, we held the first ever international student testimony contest because we wanted those stories to be heard and to be known. So, um, the contest was entitled, I Represent, and our winner is a mighty man of God who has recently gone through another great trial in his journey here. So, I encourage you to really open your heart um, to his story and just hear the healing power of God in his life. So, um, in a minute, our very own Cornelius Queck will be coming to share his testimony. Following Cornelius, we will have the Kwanga sisters. <laughs> um, Becky and her sister Esther, actually, um, who will be performing an ethnic worship dance to Sanjo Lama Yahweh, <laughs> which means exalt the Lord in Swahili. So get excited for that. They are very talented. And finally, we will have a very special guest speaker this morning. He's one of our own, and he's very special to the International Student Organization because he's actually one of our advisors. And he has been a former international student himself, so he identifies a lot with this group. He was born in Jamaica and immigrated to England 
um, in his teen years, and then he went to Bible college from there. And after that, he was a missionary in Ghana, Africa for four years. Um, from there, he came to the blessed campus of ORU and has been teaching in graduate theology for over 25 years. So give Dr. Trevor Grizzle a warm welcome when he comes. I know you all know that students can be difficult, so 25 years, that's a long time. Okay, at this time, we are going to just welcome Cornelius Quick. Wow, thank you. You guys look pretty stellar from up here. I've always wondered how it looks like from up here, but thumbs up. You know, it's more nerve wracking than I thought it would be. You know, my knees are having a little fellowship right now as I'm speaking, just to be honest. You guys doing all right there? If you are, I'm, I'm worried. It's an incredible honor for me to be uh, here today, standing before the university and giving a testimony. My name is Cornelius Quack, and I'm a graduate theology student. I was born and raised in Singapore, and I, res I represent here at ORU a community of international students hailing from more than 60 countries who have left the comfort zones of our homeland, food, and family, who have traveled thousands of miles across continents to arrive at a quaint little place called Tulsa, Oklahoma, <laughs> to a one-of-its-kind, exceptional facility that God has raised up, Oral Roberts University. More than that, I represent a unique group of international students who is consumed with a passion and commitment to pursue God's call and destiny for our lives, raise and train to hear God's voice and to obey it, and to ultimately impact the countries where we've come from, where God's light is dim, where God's voice is heard small and his healing power is not known. Being international, I also represent students who are not eligible for federal aid or government grants that most of you are. We not only have to stretch our local currencies, but we had to stretch our faith to trust God for large amounts of finances just to be here. Had it not been for the voice of God, his mighty provision, and his grace to obey, many of us would not have had the opportunity and privilege of sitting in a chapel today. When I was 16, God spoke to my heart that I was to go to Oral Roberts University someday. I did not know where ORU was and definitely have never heard of Tulsa. I'm sure many of you share the same sentiment. <laughs> right? Yeah, cool. It's true. The only thing I knew about Oklahoma was that it was an okay place. Get it? <laughs> Oklahoma okay? Get it? All right. Yeah. It's okay, all right? I had not the faintest idea how I was ever going to end up at ORU. In 2005, while I was studying at a university in London in the United Kingdom, God spoke to my heart that I was to transfer to ORU. In the fall of 2005, that reality came to pass. I was offered a partial scholarship from home, so I packed my bags, ate a year's worth of my mom's sweet and sour chicken, it's true, and said my goodbyes. However, God was only beginning to stretch my faith. Being far away from home, God told me that ORU is my spiritual home and covering, that ex-president Richard Roberts and Mrs. Roberts were my spiritual parents, and that I was to sow financially into Oral Roberts Ministries. In obedience, over the months of October and November 2005, I sowed a total of $1,000. I thought about all the Chinese food I could eat and all the toys and gadgets I could buy with that money. Seriously, you have no idea. <laughs> However, unknown to me, God was orchestrating and weaving together a miracle on my behalf. Over the Christmas break, I found myself needing $11,000 for the coming spring semester. I had one week to raise that money. In my heart, I had set my fate to believe God will return a harvest on the seeds that I have sown. I called my best friend Gregory from home and told him to pray for me. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, he called up his friend T.L., whom he hasn't seen in seven years. 
I contacted Tia and told him about what God is doing in my life and about my need. The very next day, he replied and said, Cornelius, my wife and I believe in a God of abundance, and we will take care of your school fees. It's true. I thought to myself, dude, did you read the fine prints? It's 11,000 non-monopoly U.S. dollars. I went absolutely bonkers. As sure as the air I breathe, three days later, I received a check for $10,885 in my CPO. Yeah, baby, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Now, I really wondered about how much sweet and sour chicken I could eat at Payway with all that money. No, seriously, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm Asian after all, you know? Every semester since then, I've seen God move and come through for me miraculously. I have received repeated amounts of $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $6,000, and $11,000. Today, six semesters later, I have received a total of $100,000 U.S. dollars. It's true. I'm pleased, I'm pumped, I'm stoked to announce to you that I'm still debt-free, and come December, I'll be graduating from, debt, from grad school debt-free. Praise Jesus. Yes. It's going to happen. And this morning, I represent before you an ever-faithful God, trustworthy, speaking, powerful, miracle-working God, and I testify to the principle and power of seed faith, and to the reality that where God calls and guides, he will surely provide. In conclusion, on a more personal note, I'd like to share a recent experience being a part of the ORU family. As an international student, it's hard enough to leave behind our family, hop on a 25-hour flight, and be halfway around the world on your own. It's even harder when one of your loved ones passes away while you were gone. Three weeks ago, I had to make that dreaded and dreadful flight home when I received news that my mom had taken her own life. I was disoriented, distraught, confused, and lost. I had many questions that were left unanswered. It was in the midst of grieving and emotional chaos when the Lord whispered to my heart, Cornelius, you are going to make it through this time by the prayers and love of your family at ORU. What followed next was, has overwhelmed and impacted my life so profoundly in more ways than one can imagine. Prayers, words of comfort, encouragement, financial contributions, acts of compassion and kindness began to pour in incessantly from this campus. My good friend Steve Loy set up a 24-hour prayer vigil for 10 days praying for me and my family. I've had many of your friends call me long distance and pray with me an hour long distance over the phone. I have received emails and long distance calls from my dean, Dr. Matthew, from the School of Theology and Missions. Prayers were offered in classes by my professors and also in classes that I wasn't a part of. Some of my friends began to forward my prayer needs to their home churches and I literally had prayers coming from all over the U.S. One of my friends wrote and recorded a song that the Lord gave her to comfort me and it ministered to me deeply. Tara Hannon, our international students coordinator, faithfully updated the international students about how I was doing and my prayer needs. My family and I are forever grateful for the love, care, prayers, ministry, and support that ORU has imparted to us during this time. As a community here at ORU, we are grieving over the sudden loss of two of our own. But let's be reminded and encouraged that we are a part of a family that cares. I know for a fact that no matter what happens and when life throws you a curveball, that we are always taken care of in this place. Fellow students, we're at a good place. This is home away from home. I stand here today proud to represent and be a part of an institution that is not just Christian by name, but one that truly represents, reflect, and radiate the love of Christ 
here on this campus, in this community, in this family, and then to the rest of the world. Personally and on behalf of all international students, thank you, ORU, for being our family, for being our parents, for being our siblings, for being our friends, and for embracing us as one of your own. Thank you.
Before I speak this morning, I, there's a presentation that's been made to Tara and the persons involved. Would you please come? Hello again. My name is Lamna Williams, as you saw in the video. Um, Tara, could you come up here a second, please? <laughs> um, y'all, if y'all don't know, this is Tara Hannon. She is basically the reason why a lot of us are here and stay here. And um, yeah, she doesn't know this being done. It's all right. Um, she's very dear to a lot of us. Everyone who's international knows Tara. And words can't express what a blessing she is to us, you know. And um, well, a lot of y'all might know this might be her last um, semester working here, all right. Um, a lot of us are leaving, I'm leaving too, you know. But um, just wanted to show that we appreciate you. And, um, so everyone kind of conspired behind your back. <laughs> um, We love you, Tara. Yeah. All right. Um, and well, yeah, just pray for this young lady here, okay? All right. Oh, yeah, she's having a baby, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Before we go on, I want to acknowledge the presence of my wife and our good friend Melissa here. It's quite obvious I won't have time to speak today. Uh, because the program has gone over time, except I want to do something that's very special, and that is to show you what some of our alumni, international alumni, are doing around the world. Now, when God called our chancellor to raise up a university, the vision of this man of God was not parochial. It really was international and global. This place was to be a magnet to pull people from all over the world to come and get a Christian education, or an education that is Christian, one that is laced with the Word of God, an education that is inspired by the Spirit, built upon the Holy Spirit indeed, and then send them back to the nations. We at ORU have been doing that. And in Raising up this university, I believe, as the president, our, our, our chancellor rather, traveled around the world, he had seen great needs, needs that were physical and spiritual. As he brought healing to many, he knew there's a, a great need for a place like this. And in establishing ORU, I believe he fulfilled his own dream, but also the hope of the psalmist who says uh, in Psalm 67, may your ways be known on earth, your salvation among the nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you, for you rule the people justly and guide the nations on earth. May all the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. ORU has been going into all the nations of the earth, bringing gladness and joy. And today, I just want to show you a couple, well, four actually, uh, video clips of, of our, our own alumni, what they're doing around the world. Thank you.
Well, we're very sorry the video uh, perhaps didn't get to the videographer or the people in, the, in this sound area. But just a few things about our internationals. Since this university was accredited, it has graduated over 1,500 international students, some from nearly every degree program have climbed the ladder to either national or international and national and international recognition. Others have gone on to establish mega churches around the world. In fact, in Korea, many of the mega churches are being pastored by ORU alumni, graduates from our school, internationals. Our own alumna, Sarah Omakwu, in Nigeria, pastors a church of over 6,000 people. Female pastor, if you please. <laughs> Amen. International alums are engaged in missionary work in some of the most dangerous places of the earth. In North Korea, in parts of China, India, Myanmar, Name it. They're there, internationals, going as missionaries, and they're ORU alums. Among the international graduates are people who have achieved a far-reaching global impact, such as Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, Terry Law. The presence of one like Dr. Seth Ablor in Ghana, a medical doctor who, through his medical service, his clinics, his hospital, doing a tremendous work for God, Feb Idahosa, who graduated only about three years ago, is now the president of Benson Idahosa University in Nigeria, an international center of learning from, to which many nations, even Europeans, go to get educated. Currently, we have about 229 or 30 international students from, from, 30, from 61 countries of the world. Now, when our, when our students come here, why do they come? Well, many come because of the international renown of its founder. Or Roberts, that name means a lot in many countries, perhaps even more than in the, in the United States. And students know that when they receive an education, it will be an excellent first-class education that is recognized around the world. And when they go back to their nations, they know that they'll get some of the best jobs going because of the training here at ORU. Upon graduation, indeed, they will feel a sense of pride, a, a sense of great accomplishment that they've received something substantial. I must watch my time, I don't have much, but internationals, what are they like? What are some of the things they go through? You've seen on the, on the video, but their plight. Sometimes they're lonely. Loneliness is a problem. If you see an international, look out for them, okay? I don't have time to elaborate on these points, but the language sometimes is a barrier. To understand and be understood sometimes is a barrier. And even sometimes when you speak English well, you still don't understand each other because of cultural differences and sometimes idiomatic differences. I think one of the big, big things, one of the big things about internationals, and today really is a, a very historic day, a very historic moment for which I congratulate Dean Boyd and the multicultural team We've been pushing for something like this for many, many years. It's finally happened where internationals are recognized. They have something to offer. But quite often they feel undervalued, like second-class citizens, but they have so much to offer. They are not here just begging, not just here uh, either, you know, looking for a handout. They have much to offer. Financial resources, a problem sometimes, they're promise. 
Some will become great national and spiritual leaders of their own nations. We don't know what we have in our midst. Some could be a prime minister, a president of their own nation, the president of some college or university. Great promise and spiritual potential you get with some of our internationals and they can pray you out of your whatever, okay? They'll wake you, they'll wake the dead by their prayer. Resurrect the dead. Let me say one more thing and quit. I could add many, many more things, but I want to just close with this. Their potential for, as, as missions resource. Uh, we have mission teams going to different countries. Uh, how much do we consult those international students from those countries? Do we just ignore them? They have tremendous knowledge about their own peoples, their own cultures. We can be greatly helped if we would pull upon the resources of these people. Amen? Let me just say a couple of things and <laughs> close. I did say it was the last thing and I'm going to go now, but their, their plea, what, what, what are they asking of you? They're basically asking for acceptance as a part of the human race. They're asking for affirmation that they are people who are full of potential and knowledge and giftedness like anyone else. And I don't have time to preach, so I'll leave the rest, okay? Let's pray as we close. So, Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for what has been accomplished. We thank you for the richness that internationals bring to our university. I pray in Jesus' name that uh, this day would forever live in the minds and hearts of those who have attended and those who are watching. We pray, God, in Jesus' name that you would cause this place or are you to be always a beacon light that shines around the world to be a magnet, to be an oasis where many can come and drink, oh God, and be filled and refreshed for the journey ahead. We thank you for our chancellor. We pray you'd extend his years. May his golden years be really golden indeed. And Lord, may he feel a sense of fulfillment. We give you all the glory and all the praise and the honor in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you all.